been delayed because of strong winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Blue Origin watching that closely. Parachutes come out right around 10,000 feet. Uh, that is completely at the mercy of the winds at this point. So if those winds are really strong at 10,000 feet, it can actually blow our capsule outside of our landing area. Meanwhile, Michael saying he's ready to blast off. Excited about tomorrow. It's going to be a lot of fun. And David, Blue Origin is feeling very confident about the weather tomorrow morning. Our coverage begins right here on ABC at 930 Eastern. David. All right. Thank you, Gio. Michael's got this. We'll be watching. I'm David Muir. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast. Pete Cajano at 5, 6, and 10. Why we have this knee-jerk reaction instead of legally you have the authority to assure that this water is safe, and we have fallen down on that. On Kansas before Island News at 6, state lawmakers grill the state health department and military leaders amid the ongoing water crisis on Oahu. This, as the military announces a fix will not be coming in time for the holidays. And dozens of demonstrators take to the state capitol today their calls to the Navy to shut down its Red Hill fuel tanks. There is a, a crisis of confidence right now. The state health department releasing new water testing results, what high levels of chemicals they found in one of the Navy system's water sources. And the state health department identifies a dozen more cases of the COVID-19 Omicron variant on Oahu. Plus, what you need to know if you recently visited the Scarlet Honolulu nightclub. Now, covering all of Hawaii, this is KITV4 Island News. Good evening, I'm Mika Miyashima. And I'm Tom George in for Rick Kwan. The Naval leaders in charge of the response to the Red Hill water crisis today taking questions from frustrated state lawmakers. In a joint hearing with the state House and Senate, the Navy says it's investigating whether operator error is to blame, but lawmakers wanted to know more about the timetable and just what led up to that crisis that has now left thousands with unsafe contaminated water. For the first time, the Navy admitted that its jet fuel is to blame, but they wouldn't go so far as to say that the Red Hill tanks were the source. We the Navy own this problem. We're going to fix it and we're going to take care of the military residents and every individual impacted as we do that. It appears some quantity of JP5 jet fuel entered the Red Hill well in a single event, likely from the 20 November spill, and then was subsequently pumped from that well and distributed throughout those portions of our Navy's water distribution system fed by the Red Hill well. We're also confident that this event was not a result of a leak from one of the Red Hill tanks. Now the Board of Water Supply, meanwhile, also urging the Navy to follow the state's order to come up with a solution within 30 days and to the shut down the fuel tanks, but the Navy still not budging. And you hear that frustration there, a demand from dozens of ralliers outside the state capitol this evening. Not only do the demonstrators want the Navy to shut down the Red Hill fuel facility, they also want them to remove the tanks completely. Protesters laid on the ground as a symbol of death. What they fear could be coming soon as a result of these ongoing water issues. Organizers are accusing the Navy of hiding information from the public as it continues to investigate the contamination. We know we cannot trust the Navy who defends only itself. So we must do everything we can to malama what is still pure. Now, organizers are also reminding fellow Oahu residents to conserve water as the Board of Water Supplies halava shaft remains shuttered as a precautionary right now. That system provides about 20% of Oahu's water. Others called on the public to make sure you register to vote as a means to remove local officials they believe aren't doing enough to address the issue. And more troubling news in the Navy's tainted water crisis. We're continuing to track this, and KITV4 is Kristen Concilio has been covering this from the beginning. She's reporting on the latest water samples from the State Department of Health. New tests revealed today dangerously high petroleum levels in the Navy's Red Hill shaft. The tests found diesel-like chemicals at 140,000 parts per billion, 350 times the safety limit, and gasoline-like chemicals at 20,000 parts per billion, more than 66 times safe drinking limits. Lawmakers grilled health and military officials on why it's taken so long to detect the petroleum. And you saw how detrimental this has been to all 
all of them. I mean, you would feel the same way I am about why this is taking so long and why we have this knee-jerk reaction instead of legally you have the authority to assure that this water is safe and we have fallen down on that. The latest samples from the Navy's Red Hill shaft were taken on December 5th. Just two days ago, the health department reported diesel fuel levels more than double safe limits in water samples collected at the Navy's Aea Halava shaft. Acting State Governor Josh Green says he's met with military officials over the past two days in an attempt to convince the Navy to remove the fuel from the underground storage tanks at Red Hill. The long game has been to repair the tanks well, I don't even think that people will tolerate waiting any longer. So we have to accelerate our response, and that's for the good of all of us. Trace levels of other petroleum chemicals were also found in samples from the Aliyah Manu Child Development Center and private residences on the Navy's water system. Green's urging the federal government to issue an emergency declaration to get more resources to help in disaster relief. It has to be viewed as, as a... a a threat as large as a, uh, a nuclear facility. You have to have so many safeguards that you can't really tolerate any kind of accident. And this fuel, if it gets into the aquifer, would have decades worth of impact. There is a, a crisis of confidence right now that we can keep the aquifer and families safe. And confidence and that um, kind of sense of security is almost as important as just the pure water itself. You have Kristen Concilio, KITV4, Island News. And I'm Local attorney Michael Green expects thousands of people to join a possible class action lawsuit against the Navy. As we reported, his office has received hundreds of calls from residents concerned about their tainted water at Red Hill. Now, he says he's now working to compile a team of lawyers to reach anyone who's been exposed. His concern is the damages and the future damages that people could suffer. This is unthinkable. In, in, in one week, I have enough information to know that the Navy knew about this for decades, and they ignored it. We have Naval people that, that lived in housing that left Hawaii years ago and probably don't know why somebody died of cancer or somebody had respiratory problems. Uh, it's thousands of people. And I'm concerned that it got into the aquifer. Green adds it does not cost families anything in class action types of cases. Well, in a town hall meeting this morning, the U.S. Army, meanwhile, told displaced military families they will not be able to go back home until the water is ruled to be safe, and that will not be in time for Christmas. KITV4's Jeremy Lee has more on how those families are expected to get by in the meantime. Our best estimates right now is that that plan is probably going to take somewhere on the order of six to eight weeks. So I am disappointed to tell you, but I have to be honest with you to tell you that we're not going to be able to move you back into your homes for Christmas. The Army says its plan is to flush, filter, and test the water systems for Red Hill and the Aliamanu Military Reservation before residents can use the water again for drinking, bathing, or under any circumstances. In the meantime, we are going to take care of you for those six to eight weeks in the best way we can. And we're going to do that principally through a set of entitlements for you and your family members that offset the crazy life you're living right now from a financial perspective. Covered expenses will include lodging and a per diem to offset meal costs and incidentals. The Army also announced a hotline for affected military residents, 1-800-984-8523. Furthermore, they're creating what the military is calling the Oahu Water Contamination Registry. All of your names will be entered and we'll go through a process to confirm w with you that your names have been entered. If you don't want to wait for that, if you just want to make sure, you can call the hotline. The Army's hope is that its water systems will return from its current state back to normal, while also looking after the health and financial well-being of its service members. Jeremy Lee, KITV4 Island News. And we'll have much more on this water crisis coming up at 6.30 tonight, including live interviews with Ernest Lau of the Board of Water Supply, Wayne Tanaka of the Sierra Club of Hawaii, and State Representative Sonny Ganadin. And be sure and stay with KITV4 for continuing coverage of this developing story. We'll have the latest on the water crisis on air, online, and across social media platforms as all that new information comes in. 
Meanwhile, the state health department has identified 12 new cases of the Omicron variant of COVID-19 on Oahu. The health department says most of the cases appear unrelated, which suggests that the variant is spreading deeper into the community. The state's also identified two possible cases of the variant among recent customers of Scarlet Honolulu nightclub. Anyone who visited the club since December 3rd is urged to get tested. Well, five more residents here in Hawaii diagnosed with COVID-19 recently died, raising the COVID-19 death toll in the islands to 1,045. The state also reporting 170 new cases. Here's a breakdown for you. There were 118 on Oahu, 23 on Maui, 10 on the Big Island, five on Kauai, one on Molokai, and 13 residents diagnosed while they were out of state. Now, the statewide average test positivity rate is up slightly, but still really low, 1.5%. And more than 9,000 Hawaii residents received a COVID-19 vaccine shot on Thursday. So far, more than 276,000 third doses have been administered in the state. As of today, more than 77% of residents age 5 and older are fully vaccinated against the virus. That amounts to more than 1 million people. The state estimates about 390,000 residents are not fully vaccinated. All right, deep breaths, a lot going on today. So let's uh, let's give you a moment of zen with this beautiful sunset out there. Live look outside, partly cloudy skies and some nice weather this evening. It is a nice shot out there. KITV4, Chief Meteorologist Pete Cajano with our first forecast. And Pete, some breezy winds ahead. Yeah, it's going to be a nice weekend. It's going to be a breezy weekend. And, and as Tom mentioned, as our Aloha Friday is shaping up the evening, pretty nice. We're expecting temperatures to slowly fall down into the middle 70s by 9 p.m. Could see a few light trade showers, mainly when we're in Malka in the early evening hours. You can see a couple of scattered showers offshore. This is going to move onshore in the next hour or so. So heads up through Kaneohe. We've got some light rain heading your way. Elsewhere, just a few passing light trade showers. And of course, big marathon weekend. It is back. Expecting temperatures to start at 73 degrees at 5 a.m. We will have some trade showers around. So expect a few passing light showers as we head through the morning by 11 a.m. up to around 80 degrees. We'll talk more about your weekend forecast coming up in just a few. Tom and Mika. All right, thank you, Pete. Well, it's a busy holiday season for U.S. Postal Service workers across the country. Yeah, Christmas right around the corner. Coming up on KITV4 Island News, we'll take a look at all the mail madness going on here in Hawaii. Honda Days from all of us at Honda. Visit your local Honda dealer today or shop online. This and it'll be nice and tender. Let me prep it for you. Come get the package, it's all done. Get the right bed the first time at Bedmart. Hurry in now and find your perfect bed with a free Smart Match sleep analysis and save up to 50% off top rated mattresses. In stock and ready for free delivery. Be Bed Smart. Shop Bedmart. Meet Shaka, Hawaii's first digital bank account from Central Pacific Bank. Want to open an account from your phone and use mobile deposit? With Shaka, it's easy to bank online instead of in line. Shaka, created for Hawaii by CPB. Protect your home from Hawaii's next severe weather event with a new roof from Kapili Roofing. Local, family-owned Kapili Roofing has been providing peace of mind one roof at a time for over a decade. From small repairs to large commercial re-roofing projects, Kapili Roofing has the knowledge and experience to install a roof you can count on for years. Ask about our GAF Master Elite warranty and how you can earn up to 40,000 Hawaiian air miles with a new roof. Kapili Roofing, building peace of mind one, one roof, roof at a time. time. Malika Dudley, GMH Weekends. GMA next week. The Matrix is taking over. Keanu, Carrie Ann, and Priyanka. And next week, Denzel, Ben Affleck. And this is so delicious, even Santa will be watching. GMA's 12 Days of Christmas Cookies. KITV4 Island News Closed Captioning. Sponsored by Aloha Termite and Pest Control.
Superior service for you with Aloha. You're watching KITV4 Island News. Welcome back. A local restaurant owner is charged with shortchanging her employees. The U.S. Department of Labor says a federal court recently affirmed findings of an investigation that found that the owner of Sura Hawaii and Thank You Pocha failed to pay $210,000 in wages, including overtime, to their employees. The government ordered Sujin Tomita to pay all back wages to 71 workers, plus a $10,000 civil penalty. Now, KIT4 reached out to Tomita for comment. So far, we haven't heard back. And Honolulu police need your help finding a missing 39-year-old woman. Police released this photo today of Melanie Ann Arendane Akui, who was last seen on, on the North Shore in October. She described as being 4 foot 10, 110 pounds, with brown hair and brown eyes. Anyone with any information can call Honolulu Crime Stoppers, the number 808-955-8300. Well, U.S. Postal Service, a busy time for them. Their carriers are expected to process and deliver more than 12 billion, billion with a B, pieces of mail between Thanksgiving and New Year's Day across the country. That is a lot of mail. KITV 4's Nicole Tam reports part of that madness in mailing is right here in the island. Tis the season where everybody rushes to the post office. It is crazy. Sometimes our lines go around the building. With more people traveling this year and delivering their gifts in person, there's a bit less stress on the postal system, but it's still hustle and bustle behind the scenes. With the holidays, we usually are sending out these equipment filled like four to five of these cages. Believe it or not, I actually get to work with Faye today as a postal clerk. And so what is the first step to becoming a great postal worker like yourself? Well, we want to make sure you look like a postal clerk. So here's <laughs> that your is a good official. First step. Okay, all right. Okay. Thank you. There we go. After a quick 10-minute training session, Faye opens up the post office for business, and my new skills are put to the test. Thank you so much for being my customer today. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> oh, this is heavy. All right. So scan. Yep. Does your um, package have any liquid, fragile, perishable, or potentially hazardous items in there? Fragile. Fragile? Yeah. Okay, what do we do? And no <laughs> lithium batteries, perfume, or mercury. Okay. With more help from Faye, we were able to process my first piece of mail. This is the tracking number, and it's expected to deliver on the 13th. And if you could please fill out a survey to tell us how we did today, we'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank have a great day. I was exhausted after three customers. Faye has been doing this for 15 years. It's actually very fun. I mean, hearing everybody's exciting stories about what they're sending to their families. And, and actually, the time goes by faster. When it's busy, the time just flies by, and we have fun. If you want your package to make it to the rest of the U.S. before Christmas, you should try to mail your items before December 17th, so it gives the Santas of USPS plenty of time to make the delivery. Nicole Tam, KITV4 Island News. Nicole's got a lot of energy working, working her shift at the post office, coming here, a turning A woman of many talents. She yeah. might have found a new career. <laughs> She's right. pretty good at that. For sure. All right, well, it's been nearly a month and a half since the Kilauea volcano's latest eruption. Still to come on KITV4 Island News at 6, newly released video, plus how much scientists say lava levels have risen. We'll be right back. Island weather is sponsored by Central Pacific Bank. Meet Chaka, Hawaii's first digital bank account from Central Pacific Bank. Made for the way we work, the way we play, the way we live. Chaka is 100% online and takes the stress out of banking. Want to open an account right from your phone and start using mobile deposit or bill pay? With Chaka, it's easy. Online is way better than inline. Chaka, created for Hawaii by Central Pacific Bank. The news you want, the way you want it. Customize your user experience with the KITV4 News app. Choose how you keep up with the news of the day and when you get news alerts. Get the news you want, when you want it with the KITV4 News app. Download it for free today. The newly refurbished Ala Moana Hotel by Mantra. Conveniently located and always an island favorite. Celebrating 50 years. Now make it yours. This is our hotel. This is our hotel. This is so much more than my hotel. This is our hotel. Ala Moana Hotel, where Kama Aina always gets the best rate. Use promo code LOCALS ONLY. It's time 
to get holiday ready with Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks, or with Ford Explorer, America's all-time best-selling SUV, and come home in a Ford Bronco Sport. That's how you get holiday ready. Now get 0% financing for 60 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on a 2021 Ford F-150. Only at your Hawaii Ford dealers. Tonight, in this pandemic now fueled by the Delta variant, the new information about Omicron, from transmissibility to vaccines, what scientists now know. More Americans turn to World News Tonight with David Muir, the most watched newscast on all of television. A message from your local community. How's it? This is Alika Nam at Cinnamons. Our ohana is hero defended because it's easy to implement and highly cost effective. Hi, I'm Dr. Eileen Coden Lapitan from Oriokonia Dental, and I'm hero defended because it works. Hey, this is Stacey Barron over at Rev Salon. We are hero defended because it's our responsibility to keep our community safe. Rise up. Join the fight. Be a hero. Well, happy Aloha Friday to you. We've made it to the weekend, looking pretty good, I think, for the weekend. It will be breezy at times, maybe a, a passing shower or two, but overall it should be a nice one, 77 degrees. Our current temperature, we don't have a whole lot of rain right now, but we do have some showers offshore, and this activity will eventually move into windward sections. Very light, but we're going to start to see some windward showers likely as we head past uh, 8 o'clock tonight, and we'll start to see a few light sprinkles, maybe even make it into town as well late night. O outside of that, uh, you know what, we'll take you to Kauai, Maui County, and the Big Island. There's really not a whole lot of rain out there. We are looking as our winds increase. Surf is going to continue to stay elevated for east shore. So it's going to be rough there. Five to seven for east, four to six for north, one to three for west, one to three for south. Small craft advisories, boating conditions less than ideal this weekend because of those winds kicking up season surf. 72 for tonight. A few light trade showers into our Saturday. We'll have some clouds in the morning. We will have some trade showers windward in Malka. Sunny for leeward spots will be partly cloudy in the afternoon for windward locations 83 the high east winds 10 to 20 miles per hour quiet looking at temperatures right around 79 for Hane Pepe. looking good here on Oahu 78 in Wahiwa Haleiwa on the North Shore at 82 degrees into Maui County low to mid 80s east winds 10 to 25 a few trade showers windward and up country into the Big Island 80 for Hilo some passing trade showers in the morning there Kona dry and 83 degrees degrees. Marathon weather on Sunday morning. We do anticipate a few light passing trade showers. So just heads up if you are watching or running, we likely will have a few passing trade showers at times. We have strong winds. We also have moisture moving in. That's kind of a combination for our trade wind showers to be active and we do expect them to be active in the morning hours. So it'll be some clouds in the mornings and passing trade showers. Then by late morning into the afternoon, the sun comes back on out. Should be a good one though. We'll have winds out of the east at 15 to 20. We're going to keep those winds breezy Monday into Tuesday. Tom. All right, thanks, Pete. Well, meanwhile, some new video tonight from the Big Island. Look at this, the ongoing lava eruption inside Halema'uma'u Crater atop Kilauea Volcano. This video was taken by the tour group Epic Lava. The USGS reports since this latest eruption started back on September 29th, the lava lake level has actually gone up by more than 200 feet, made up entirely of uh, 8 billion gallons of lava. Wow, it's amazing to see in person. Mm-hmm, an incredible video there, too. Well, thousands of runners will hit the streets of Oahu this weekend for the Honolulu Marathon. Yeah, big weekend coming up on KITV4 Island News, which you need to know about the changes in effect this year. The classic Hollywood story. We meet the hero, the all-new Nissan Frontier. Hero faces seemingly impossible challenge. The plot twist. The hero prevails. In Hollywood, this would be the end. But out here, we're just getting started. Introducing the all-new Nissan Frontier. Right now, get 0% APR financing for up to 72 months on 14 models. In Portugal, Nazare, it's so quiet and all you hear is this giant wave. And it's like the monster at the other side of town. I think that question that pops into your head, what am I doing out here? This is really dangerous and is it worth it? You're like, yeah, of course. Get 70,000 bonus priority miles with the Priority Destinations World Elite MasterCard. First Hawaiian Bank. It all starts with yes. 
get the right bed the first time at Bedmart. Hurry in now and find your perfect bed with a free Smart Match sleep analysis and save up to 50% off top rated mattresses in stock and ready for free delivery. Be bed smart. Shop Bedmart. I don't just play someone brainy on TV. I'm an actual neuroscientist, and I love the science behind Nariva Plus. Unlike ordinary memory supplements, Nariva Plus fuels six key indicators of brain performance. More brain performance, yes please. Nariva, think bigger. From a distance, you don't really notice, but once you really start sorting the sand, you realize, wow, there is actually a lot of plastic in here. There's definitely a need for us to clean the beaches. Sometimes you need a huge army of people to make an impact. Although we might not see the direct benefit of it, hopefully future generations will, and we have to start somewhere. Protect your home from Hawaii's next severe weather event with a new roof from Kapili Roofing. Local, family-owned Kapili Roofing has been providing peace of mind one roof at a time for over a decade. From small repairs to large commercial re-roofing projects, Kapili Roofing has the knowledge and experience to install a roof you can count on for years. Ask about our GAF Master Elite warranty and how you can earn up to 40,000 Hawaiian air miles with a new roof. Kapili Roofing, building peace of mind one, one roof at a time. time. All right, well, the race is on this weekend after being forced uh, virtual last year because of COVID. The Honolulu Marathon back on again this weekend. And participants gathered at the Honolulu Convention Center today to pick up the race bibs. But as KITV4's Leah Kamana learned today, organizers were unsure what turnout was going to be like this year. We didn't really know what to expect. There's no Japanese. We're so much smaller than we've been for 30 years. And not until those doors opened today and we saw that line out there and the people streaming in. Uh, I've always wanted to do a marathon. Uh, I wanted to do it last year, but due to COVID, I wasn't able to run it last year here. So um, I'm really excited to do it this year. A little bit nervous, but I'm also excited as well. Uh, I'm, I think I've done all the prep that I need to do to get ready for this. So it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. We have 14,000 registrants uh, for the race. Many of those entered months ago or even a year and a half ago. But we're getting a lot of people entering today, uh, which is really shocking us. In years past, more than 30,000 participants. When I went to the, the convention for the, the check-in, I don't see any vendors and, you know, it's like not too many people. And, and I was buy you know i was gonna buy that there's some like a tapes and stuff but they don't have it this year so it's a little weird but but it's okay the loss of the japanese market impacting registration numbers by 70 percent and revenue by 85 percent our goal our objective was to put the race on whatever it looked like however many people showed up didn't matter we felt for our own viability uh, to continue as an event into the future. This event had to happen. So here's how the race will look different this year. Staggered start times, self-serve aid stations, and no festival at the finish line. I'm impressed with just the communal aspect of like this group. Everyone comes together and, and yeah, it's like encouraging because obviously people took steps and measures to like get here. So like they're doing their due diligence, try to help uh, combat this virus and so to see all this yeah it's, it's amazing i think that it's it's good for um that they don't have any limitation and then the welcoming feeling to everybody so it's it's good i mean you know i hope that uh, the hawaii can keep up that this event for every year and i think when that gun goes off at 5 a.m and those fireworks light up the sky I think other than the people that we get irritated when we wake them up, I think people are going to be really happy that this thing is going. In Honolulu, Leah Kamana, KITV4 Island News. Hey, anybody that can run 26.2 miles, that's a winner in my book. And uh, just a, re a reminder, the road closures are going to start at 1230 in the morning this Sunday for the marathon. Uh, if you're driving, you can expect delays all the way from downtown Honolulu over to Hawaii Kai. We have a full link to the traffic advisory for you on our website, KITV.com. Yeah, good luck to everyone out there. Well, there's plenty of questions surrounding Oahu's continued water crisis. After the break, Ernest Lau from the Board of Water Supply joining us live with some answers. This segment of KITV4 Island News is sponsored by Spectrum. 
Spectrum Mobile now costs just $29.99 a month when you get two or more lines. $29.99? Yes, and you get everything. You get unlimited data and nationwide 5G. And all you're paying is... Oh, that's what I was going to say. And all this comes on a super secure connection. $29.99. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Are they crazy? Possibly. Are they gonna change it? No, they already made the balloons. It's the best deal in mobile. Spectrum Mobile. Go where the contractors go. I live in Kapolei uh, in the uh, Kumuiki track out there, and it takes me probably five minutes to get out here. Well, I live in Makahilo, and it took me less than 10 minutes to get down to this store. After you get past Costco, there's a mix left. Turn off the main drag and you're right behind Costco gas station. Perfect place. Hardware Hawaii in Koloa, Kailua, Kapolei, Mapunapuna. Contractor's Choice. This holiday season, where will you shop for your diamonds? Pacific Diamond has an amazing inventory to choose from. Shopping for diamond earrings, pendants, bracelets? Visit our yellow tag sale for your deep discounts on new merchandise, loose diamonds, and gold chains, guaranteed to be the lowest prices in the state. Visit our location on Kapiolani and at the Waimalu Plaza in Aiea. Wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy, Happy New Year. Year. We were really afraid. We didn't know what to expect as we went through the pandemic. And having Hawaii National Bank right there alongside of us, there to support me, was all the difference. When I think about the future, I get excited. There's a glitch in the matrix, and Denny's is delivering for free. Get special glitchy freebies at Denny's.com, but free delivery won't last long. See you at Denny's.com. Able Pest Management has Hawaii's pests under control, offering traditional tent fumigation and state-of-the-art heat treatment options that allow you to live in your home while the pests are being taken care of. Visit AblePestHawaii.com or give us a call. Able Pest Management. It's under control. The countdown is again on to the new liftoff time for Michael Strahan soaring into space. Now, just one day before liftoff, Michael Strahan is there live. I'm excited. I'm ready to go. This morning, only on ABC's Good Morning America. Welcome back. We turn back to Oahu's continued water crisis. Yeah, there was a really heated uh, hearing earlier today with naval officials being grilled by lawmakers and the Board of Water Supply. And uh, joining us live to continue the conversation, we have Ernie Lau with the Honolulu Board of Water Supply. Ernie, thank you so much for being here. I know this was uh, a busy day for you, but first I want to jump to that that hearing that we just we just saw with those naval officials. I mean, you really didn't mince words with them. You, you, you said, you know, you want them to follow that order to either fix the problem or face a shutdown. Were you confident in, in what they told you? You know, unfortunately, I just to be honest, I, I, I was not very, very confident. It, uh, I didn't like what I heard. Uh, I didn't hear a commitment to empty those tanks as soon as possible. Uh, I didn't necessarily hear a commitment that they are going to follow the health director's emergency order. And that's what I was looking for. And talk about why it's so critical that the Navy uh, does follow through with this, as well as uh, it is transparent and communicates with the Board of Water Supply. Yeah, it's really important because, you know, again, I go back to, we all depend on this uh, groundwater aquifer for our water resources in that area. And if it's contaminated with fuel, and the numbers that came out and were, were released today by the Department of Health of what they found in Red Hill Shaft, the Navy's drinking water source, they're alarming numbers. They're so high, I had to kind of pinch myself to think, was this real? That the concentrations of diesel and gasoline in that uh, their own water source, source was so, were so high. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's a representation of what could be in the aquifer and could be flowing underground. Uh, and we don't know which direction it might be flowing, and that's why we've secured uh, stop pumping halava shaft. And you know, for the fr at least that was the first time I heard them actually use the the word uh, jet fuel, but then they still wouldn't go as far as to say that the the tanks were the source of this. And you mentioned the aquifer. Um, there have already been you know two different wells now that were contaminated. You know, what do you say to what do you say to people that are, are questioning this? And you know, if we all pull from the same aquifer, uh, is there concern that the aquifer is contaminated too? 
uh, I do have concerns uh, about that, especially if the test results on the the, a the Navy's IA Halawa shaft comes back positive, uh, confirmed positive for diesel in it. Uh, then that's to me an indication that the fuel could have flowed across the valley, and that's a to me that's an alarm bell. You know, it's like the fire alarm bell going off in your room. It's splitting your ears, but if you're still staying in the room and not doing something about that, you know, something is wrong here. So I, I would ask the Navy to really just realize that you can't keep this World War II facility running uh, without endangering our water resources. And has there been any talks of maybe getting emergency authorization to detect just how widespread this fuel contamination could possibly be and to speed up that process? You know, there is uh, some uh, work that the Navy has done, uh, and that's something that, you know, we're going to be briefing the Board of Water Supply on on Monday at our water board meeting. Uh, but I, I think the uh, what the Navy's uh, initial modeling and uh, findings are is that if Halava shaft kept on pumping and the Navy's Red Hill shaft stopped pumping, uh, fuel could flow quite a distance toward the west, eventually ending up in in Pearl Harbor uh, and potentially impacting our, our IEA and Halava well, which we have turned off uh, upon notice of that other uh, uh, detection of that other Navy well. Uh, so these are questions I think the Navy should just come forward and share this information. Uh, they mentioned about doing investigations into the leak uh, there at Red Hill. Uh, and how that fuel got into the system and they referenced the November 20th leak. Uh, you know, really that information, the part of their investigative report, I believe that should be made completely public, fully unredacted. So everybody can understand what's happening with that facility. Uh, that's that's why I request the Navy. And, and I, right now, I know that the Board of Water Supply is urging people to use their water wisely, uh, conservative possible, and it's voluntary right now, but I mean, how could, soon could that become mandatory? And really, what do people need to know about that? You know, the real test will come uh, next summer when it's hot and dry. And that's when we normally see water demand getting to the highest levels during the year. And that'll be the test of whether or not our other wells can meet the demand at the time. If it can't, then we are going to step up our request for conservation. If necessary, where demand for water might exceed supply available from our wells, we may have to implement mandatory uh, restrictions on water usage. I hope I don't have to go there. I, I'm really hopeful that our community will step forward, will cocoa, and that we'll all work together uh, to live within the available water that we have for our community and uh, that we won't have to go as far as mandatory restrictions. And and right now, what strain is there on, on the other remaining wells right now? And and also just how widespread could this be? If it, if, if it does test positive that there were contamination in the aquifer itself, you know, what happens then? Uh, in terms of the... Uh, uh, the system or the people that are impacted for the city of Honolulu, it goes from like Halaba Valley all the way out to Hawaii Kai, and that's over 400,000 people. Uh, we've also shut, uh, as of yesterday, an additional two wells, uh, IA and ha uh, Halaba well, and that impacts about 20,000 more uh, of our customers uh, that live in the community of IA and Halaba from uh, Halawa Eva Anna Street all the way out to Hikaha Street on the west. So when when that hap uh, when that happens and when you do have to shut down certain wells, does it put a strain on the remaining wells or, or ha what happens there? Uh, yes, the remaining wells have to pump harder, pump longer uh, to meet the demand for water. Uh, and uh, for the Aia Halawa system, when we turned off those two well uh, well stations, uh, we lost about 50% of our source capacity. Uh, so there's even a larger impact on a smaller water system. And for Halava shaft feeding into Honolulu, that's a 20% of our source capacity there uh, that we had to just basically turn off the switch, turn off the pumps, and not allow any more water to come into the system from Halava shaft and those other two wells. And what does drinking water look like right now? Can you give us an update from the Board of Water Supply? 
Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, what exactly does drinking water look like right now? Are you testing and sampling it from the Board of Water Supply's standpoint? Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, we are te testing and sampling on a weekly basis. The five nearest wells that are closest on either side of the Red Hill fuel tank facility, uh, we are testing weekly. Um, and actually, we've started testing eight years ago, almost eight years ago in 2014, after the 27,000 gallon leak from tank number five. And, and just uh, r real quick, I, you know, I just want to make clear, I know you brought this up at, at the hearing and, and you know, there's debate over whether the Navy is going to follow the order, but just to be clear, in, in, in your estimation, how does this end? Do you think the tanks need to be removed? Uh, bottom line, the tanks need to uh, be emptied out and uh, they should look at uh, relocating the fuel storage at a location not over the drinking water aquifer. I think the record and the more recent experiences I mean, they're right in front of us. If we don't do something uh, now, you know, we are gonna be facing a greater environmental disaster and, and the impact on our water systems. You know, we're, Port of Water Supply, our, our test results come back, no fuel detected, and our water is safe for our BWS customers. Uh, unfortunately, the customers served off the Navy systems, they are struggling with that because their water, they can't drink it, uh, they can't use it for uh, personal hygiene or other, uh, like washing their clothes or taking a shower. Yeah, it's just uh, such a difficult situation out there. I know you're uh, working to stay on top of it. Uh, Ernie, we appreciate you joining us uh, this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We appreciate Everybody it. Be uh, absolutely. And coming up next, uh, one of the first groups to sound the alarm over the Red Hill crisis also wants more accountability. We're talking with the head of the Sierra Club about their next steps in fighting to get the tank shut down. We'll be right back. Our family car was a treasure. When it was time, we wanted our car to help take care of others. The Kidney Cars program was exactly what we were looking for. They made it easy and gave us peace of mind. We simply filled out a form and they took care of the title transfer and what we needed for our tax deduction. Donating to Kidney Cars was a win-win. It feels great to know that our car will save lives. Donate your car at kidneyhi.org. Think COVID is something only Kupuna need to worry about? Think again. Because in Hawaii today, more than half of COVID cases are in people under 40. Yes, more than half. And that includes Keiki and teenagers. Ever since the Delta variant hit, more young people are getting infected, which means more young people need to get vaccinated. COVID doesn't care how old or young you are. And the vaccine is our best shot to stop it. American Floor and Home is your one-stop shop when it comes to your dream home. We are here for all of your remodeling needs. From flooring to kitchen and bathroom renovations, we do it all. Our team of professionals will guide you through every step of the remodeling process. Let American Floor and Home help you design, build out, and live in your dream home. For more information and to schedule your free consultation, check out our website at AmericanFloorandHome.com. Greetings, saints and friends. I'm Pastor Billy Holland Jr. of the Apostolic Faith Church, welcoming you every Sunday morning here in Hawaii and across the world to break in your weekend with faith, song, and worship with the Kingdom of God Crusade. We'll share in our music and song with the church band and the choir, along with a spirit-filled and spirit-directed sermon. We hope and pray you'll let us be a part of your Sunday activities. That's the Kingdom of God Crusade every Sunday morning. perfect bed with a free smart match sleep analysis and save up to 50% off top rated mattresses in stock and ready for free delivery. Be bed smart. Shop bed mart. Football fans, this podcast is for you. Join me every Thursday as I deliver the latest news and analysis on UH Warrior football plus high school football from around the state. Find Island Football with me, Keith the Motor, at KITV.com.
Well, welcome back. We want to continue this conversation about a wall who's contaminated water. Joining us live is Wayne Tanaka with the Sierra Club of Hawaii. Wayne, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We want to start off with uh, the very latest today. Demonstrators were gathered outside of the state capitol uh, to hold a die-in, demonstrating their calls for the Navy to shut down the Red Hill fuel for storage, storage tanks, that is. So uh, a lot of people joining the call and concerned right now. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Great to be here. Um, yes, I think today uh, today's event was organized by a group called the Oahu Water Protectors. Um, it includes folks who have been involved in this issue for years, like the Sierra Club, Hawaii Peace and Justice, um, and some people who have been involved with this issue for decades. Um, and although we come from, I think, different um, places on uh, the political uh, spectrum, have different perspectives on, on different things, you know, we all agree that we just can't sit around and watch our water supply become contaminated uh, potentially irreversibly and potentially for a very, very long time. And has has the ship already sailed on that to some degree? You know, obviously there's there's concerns. We just we just spoke with uh, the head of the board of water supply. Not sure uh, whether the aquifer itself at this point is contaminated. What are what are some of the concerns you're seeing, and what potential long-term impacts could, would that have on our environment as we wait for those samples to come back? You know, you know, right, we're holding our breath right now. It's 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 bad. It's really bad. Um, if Halawa shaft is shut down, that's going to impact us uh, for a very long time potentially. Um, very concerning about the contamination levels. Um, you know, we rely on this aquifer uh, not just to drink, but for pretty much every aspect of our life, uh, of, of our lives uh, here on Oahu. Um, we're, as bad as it is, it could get much, much worse. Um, as you know, as you probably know, each of these tanks, which are 80 years old, uh, contain millions upon millions of gallons of fuel. And what's what's leaked thus far would be dwarfed by a, a leak that's even a fraction of what these tanks contain. Um, yeah, and as you know, as the Board of Water Supply has said, we're looking at uh, moratoriums, uh, water shutdowns, and shutdowns of construction, um, uh, increases in in the cost of providing water if we can even find those resources. Uh, the, the consequences uh, could be dire and could definitely get uh, much worse. And I know you've taken uh, your calls of concern to the president, to the government. Uh, what kind of response have you gotten? Um, so thus far, we have not received a response to our letter. Um, our, our friends at the uh, Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement did get a response from the White House saying that um, they were working on a formal reply, but thus far, I have not heard, uh, we have not heard back from them. Uh, that being said, we're continuing to uh, press to get our members, to get members of the community to reach out uh, directly to the White House and to the top brass in the Pentagon. And as, as you mentioned, I know you, you're still trying to assess just how widespread this is. Obviously, the Navy themselves have pledged accountability, but also said, you know, in some cases they are willing to bring people in to maybe do some kind of an independent investigation. What, what do you think it's going to take uh, to have the boots on the ground to actually really assess just how bad this is and make sure that it's transparent and accurate in what we find out? So that's one of, been one of our long-standing concerns is that it's very, very hard to assess, um, you know, what happens after a spill, like we've seen, like where the field is, where it's spread, where the plume is going. Um, it's not an easy task, and in some cases, it may not even be a possible task. Uh, I think what everyone needs to focus on now is getting this fuel out, out of the facility, away from our drinking water, before we see something much worse happen. And talking about that, what is the potential worst case scenario that you're worried about if this doesn't happen right away? So, um, over the course of uh, the lifetime of this facility, you know, we've seen 180,000 gallons um, leak. Uh, the historic leaks have hit the groundwater table. In 2014, we had a 27,000 gallon leak that hit the groundwater table. Um, again, a these tanks each hold up to 12.5 million gallons of fuel. Even one million gallons would be 37 times what we saw in 2014. Um, so you can, as you can imagine, a spill of even just a fraction of what one of these tanks hold would dwarf the impacts that we're seeing today. And you know, I think everybody's trying to look for the solution here. But you know, even if if uh, they are shut down, uh, what, what what happens then? Where would all that fuel go? And 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 would that process be be safe? Right. So 
we don't know. We don't know where the fuel is coming from now, and that's why in the governor's emergency order, he gave the Navy time to assess the integrity of their pipelines, of their pumping station, to see if it is safe to even get this fuel off um, the aquifer. Once they make that assessment, the order uh, requires them to, to drain the tanks. Um, there, are, there are options for storing this fuel temporarily in alternative locations. Uh, the lieutenant governor has identified a fuel facility in uh, Kapolei, I believe, that can hold maybe a third of the fuel. There's other uh, facilities throughout the island. Uh, there's tankers that we could move this fuel to um and and that should be happening yesterday um but really again we need to make sure that we can get this fuel safely off all away from our water and then do so um as soon as possible and just real quick can you just kind of you know there's a lot of science behind this a lot of people don't really understand how this works can you just kind of briefly just in layman's terms just for people watching here on oahu um should they be worried yes oh yes they should um Again, you know, this this provides the drinking water for everyone from Halavo to Mauna Loa to Hawaii Kai. Um, that's this includes, you know, downtown Honolulu, Waikiki. The majority of our hospitals, our schools, our homes. Um, uh, the the impacts to our very way of life would be uh, uh, devastating. Um, this is an existential issue, and uh, that everyone who cares about this place, um, who, who who loves you know Hawaii and, and, and Oahu like you should be very we should be very concerned yeah very a lot of, a lot of concern out there and we appreciate you uh, you joining us to kind of break it all down for us thank you so much uh, Wayne thank you thank you Aloha well coming up lawmakers grilled naval leaders today about their response to the crisis now one of those lawmakers who was in on that meeting and represents the area state representative Sonny Gannadin joining us live uh, in the next uh, couple minutes to talk about what he wants to see done we'll be right back when he was by himself, my dad started regressing. I've seen a complete change in him when he came to the plaza. It's like night and day. She gets her nails done, her hair done, washed, cut. I think she feels better about herself. The plaza nurses definitely saved his life. At home, he would not have made it. There is no doubt in my mind that she feels comfortable and safe and she's happy. The plaza brought him back to life and it gave us back our dad. Uh-oh! We have to decorate first! I'm so glad you're home. We missed you. I missed this. You slow cook this and it'll be nice and tender. Let me prep it for you. Come get the package, it's all done. In today's hectic world, you could use a little more easy, like our digital loan applications that take paper out of the paperwork. Apply online, by phone, or in person. Our self-service interactive teller machines can cash your checks and accept deposits for even speedier banking. Easy is about offering service options that are always right by you. We're Hawaii State Federal Credit Union, and in a hectic world, easy sure feels good. In 1975, Frank and Grace Tamai started Ace Auto Glass. They believed that quality glass installed by caring people would produce the best results. Three generations later, these values still hold true. Ace certified technicians still follow the highest safety standards with innovative technology to take care of you and your family. From our family to yours, thank you for making Ace Auto Glass Hawaii's leading automotive glass provider. When you think of glass, think Ace Auto. Was that time of year of joy and cheer so we got you the gift that's both naughty and dear and this holiday season will be different you can tell because these sharks really want to see you do well shark tank on abc celebrity wheel of fortune spells big time hit it's fun because when the stars take the wheel things get really crazy <laughs> i think the wheels have just come off celebrity wheel of fortune sunday on abc and stream on hulu
Welcome back. Time now 651. And as we mentioned, we're continuing to follow the ongoing Oahu water crisis. Uh, earlier today, top naval officials were getting grilled by state lawmakers as part of a legislative hearing. And joining us live tonight, State Representative Sonny Ganadin, who represents the Hickam, Pearl Harbor, and Halava Valley Estates area, right in the heart of uh, where this is all happening. Thank you so much for uh, being here. Good evening. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Thank you for inviting me on. A absolutely. Well, we just we want to jump right into it. It was it really got heated at times. Uh, the naval officials, uh, you know, answering those questions today. I think was the first time I heard them mention uh, jet fuel as the source of it. We wouldn't go as far as to say that they believe that the tanks may have been uh, the source of that. Uh, you said in on that meeting. Do you feel like they did a good enough job answering those questions? No. No, I don't. Um, for years, the United States Navy has assured the state legislature and the county of Hawaii, the county of Honolulu, that nothing like this would ever occur, that there is um, adequate safeguards, numerous forms of testing, and um, we're now looking at almost a worst case scenario. 93,000 human beings uh, are now displaced because they don't have fresh drinking water. Um, there are more questions than we have answers about the civilian water usage, including um, the very important Halava shaft, which represents 20% of the drinking water for urban Honolulu. Um, that might affect our economy, um, our the border water supplies capacity to issue new water permits well into the future. Um, so no, none of us are, are all that satisfied with the United States Navy's response. This is one of the few instances where Almost all elected officials are in agreement, um, including our federal delegation. Uh, the state House of Representatives urged out, sent out a fairly strong letter on the 6th um, asking for a water treatment facility, decommissioning of the tanks, and a plan um, given to us so that we can prepare for the 2022 legislative session and I want to kind of ask you about that as well because you know we've, we've heard we've heard about you know why this is a crisis and uh, you know what, what what the next steps are but right now I mean for, talk about the political side of this too because there was that order that was issued by the governor you know asking them to create a plan to fix the situation so far it seems that the Navy has kind of um, balked at that and and it, it, is there any tool at your disposal at the state level to you know hold them accountable or what do you see as the next step here Hawaii Revised Statutes 340E. Um, this is one of the rare instances in which the state has authority over the federal government. Uh, keep in mind that um, the Navy must honor the law. They must honor the agreement that they entered into with the state to lease the state land and to use our collective and irreplaceable water source. Lines have really now been drawn. Um, this is a legal dispute over whether the U.S. Navy is in a partnership with the state and the county and whether they must comply with our rules to ensure safe drinking water. Of course, they have their own rules, um, but uh, to lease our land, the state's land, um, and to use our collective water resource, of course, they are under the purview of the Department of Health. And it's under that, that um, agreement first entered into in 2015 that the governor uh, issued his most recent order. And I believe that it's legally valid um, and coming from a um, fairly small state house representative um, to um, to say that you know the secretary of the navy needs to comply is is, is something, but it, but it's coming from all of us. It's coming from the Hawaii State House of Representatives. It's coming from our um, federal delegation and from our governor. Uh, we, we're in agreement. I know one of the complaints today was that there it took a while for results to come back for uh, you know the testing of this water. So will the state legislature does it plan to create funding or for some type of testing lab here in the islands to speed up the process? Uh, how is that being handled? Absolutely, that is of utmost concern that we don't have um, what they call TPH testing to um, figure out uh, carcinogens. Um, the um, Petroleum chemicals that make up JP8 and JP5 uh, jet fuel, uh, we cannot um, um, assess those in a timely manner. I'm going to use the, the term from the pandemic, point in time testing. We really don't have point in time testing for, um, for our water supply, and we need to develop that here um, in the state and on island prior to um, really moving forward. So, so we're at a lack of information. And um, 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 
I won't be placing any blame, but but it's it's clear that we, we need to move on that. We need to move on adequate testing. And just, uh, you know, we're almost out of time, but just real quick, I know this hits close to home for you. You represent right at the heart of that. You know, what's the biggest fear from your constituents? Um, that they might not be able to look, come back to their homes. It's a big deal. Um, also, that as we defuel uh, the Red Hill bulk fuel storage facility, that there might be more leaks. Um, keep in mind that not only are the tanks 80 years old, but the pipes are 80 years old too in some parts. Um, and so they connect. Um, this is going to really jeopardize the military's continual use of land here in the state of Hawaii. So it's a great concern moving forward. Absolutely. And uh, we, we appreciate your time. And I know we're, we're going to follow up on it for sure. All right. Thank you so much. And happy holidays. Thank Absolutely. you so much for being here. We appreciate it. And we did want to note, we also did reach out to the Navy to participate in tonight's discussions, but did not hear back. Meanwhile, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll be back here at 10 o'clock tonight. Aloha. Mrs. Claus, the shopping boss here to help you merry savers decorate with the best bargains ever. Ross has savings on everything you need to get the party started. Because who waits for shipping anymore? Or guests. I love saying yes to more merry for less at Ross. As parents, it's our responsibility to protect our children from the dangers they face in everyday life. Today, there's an invisible danger. COVID-19 is in our lives, and it poses a grave threat to our children. More children are getting sick every day. I know. My daughter caught COVID, and it was scary. Your child's life is precious. Don't wait. Vaccinate. It's time to get holiday ready with Ford F-Series. America's best-selling trucks, or with Ford Explorer, America's all-time best-selling SUV. And come home in a Ford Bronco Sport. That's how you get holiday ready. Now get 0% financing for 60 months, plus 1,000 bonus cash on a 2021 Ford F-150, only at your Hawaii Ford dealers. Get the right bed the first time at Bedmart. Hurry in now and find your perfect bed with a free Smart Match sleep analysis and save up to 50% off top-rated mattresses. In stock and ready for free delivery. Be bed smart. Shop Bedmart. Mrs. Claus, the shopping boss here to help you Merry Savers find the best bargains ever. When you have the world's longest list, you go to Ross so you can work that budget and get those savings. I love saying yes to more Merry for less 